Hello everyone. Um, so we're still waiting on baby. Another night that seemed like maybe baby was going to come. He is not in a rush, it seems, which is kind of funny. My last three children came early and my last one came a month early. So we've been ready for a month already. And it's it's been bittersweet. Like it's wonderful that I haven't had him too early. A, because there's potential health problems, um, but B, because it's just allowed us to get a lot more done. But um, I've run into this issue where I'm trying to figure out how to keep myself busy and not go stir crazy waiting for a baby to come. And when you live off grid in the bush, that's actually not as easy <laughs> as it may have seemed to me when I lived in the city. So when I lived in the city, I would go to the mall and walk around or go get a manicure and do stuff like that or work in my yard. But I had conveniences to make it really easy to pass that time. And up until a short while ago, so a couple weeks ago, I haven't even had internet up at my place. So watching YouTube's not a possibility and doing work on the businesses was difficult. So we've been having to find ways to get as much done as possible in my limited physical capacity right now as I cannot touch my toes and lifting things is very difficult. Hell, standing up from a sitting position is difficult right now. So. Um, I thought I'd do a quick video on what the heck does a an off-grid homesteader do while awaiting the arrival of a baby on the homestead. So our first maybe baby's coming, um, I don't want to call it a scare, but incident was um, earlier in December. And at that point, we were really still hoping to get a propane furnace installed. And um, so the focus then was just picking up extra hay for the sheep and um, trying to get some work done inside the house. I was actually putting in floors at that point because I haven't actually had real floors in the house. So now I have plywood floors. The flooring itself isn't down, but we've painted the plywood and it's doing great. And that was a huge accomplishment. So that involved ripping out hempcrete we had a hempcrete slab floor, which did not work at all um, for this application in the tiny house on an old hay wagon. So that all had to be ripped up and we put in floor joists and then put down some 5 8 plywood. And it's phenomenal. Being able to sweep my floors, oh, that's amazing. Washing the floors, even better. So um, that was one of the first ways that we have kept ourselves busy is doing some major construction projects in the house and after that came the need for some interior walls so <laughs> my house is 28 feet by 14 feet and it was all downstairs is bathroom utility room kitchen and living room and then upstairs is two bedrooms and most of the rooms in my house, despite it being a tiny house, are kind of full-sized apartment-sized rooms. However, there were no interior walls at all downstairs. So the bathroom, kitchen, utility room, and dining room is all one room. And that was starting to be annoying, <laughs> especially having people come over and having teenagers that are up um, for holidays and whatnot. So we put in some interior walls downstairs so the kitchen and the bathroom have a dividing wall now, which is absolutely phenomenal. And um, that was another major project that we were waiting on getting done. So, so those two were taken care of. And then, as I mentioned in the last video about the direct vent propane heater, then we found one close by. Now, I had been researching these furnaces for quite a while, and we had made a decision to buy one online through Costco, 
primarily because of their return policy. If something was to go wrong or it wasn't to work out, we would have good options for returning. And because shipping would not apply. They just ship it to the nearest Costco store or straight up to us and it's included in the price. However, we needed to go purchase some lumber and my favorite lumber store is about an hour away at a place called Nearlandia. It's a co-op farm store and the lumber there is just cheaper. So we were heading over to purchase some sheets of OSB to sheet the interior of the house with and we found one. It was actually a nicer model than the one that we had selected through Costco. Uh, it's a more expensive model and it had an actual thermostat. So the ones that we had been looking at, the Martin direct vent propane furnaces, they have a dial thermostat where you set it to like low, medium, high and, um, and that's great but it doesn't give you the same control over the amount of heat coming off of the unit. So this one had a thermostat, which was amazing. And so we went back the next day and bought it. And then after, it took us a couple days to get it installed, not because it took a long time to get it installed, but because we were continually getting the wrong fittings um, or not buying the right fitting. So it's not that the ones that we bought were necessarily wrong. It's just that we were missing fittings that we needed. So it took a little while to end up with the right pieces, but the actual install was just a few hours to get it in. And that happened, I think it was December 22nd um, or 23rd that we finally got that in right before Christmas. My teenagers were up visiting and that was an amazing accomplishment that just felt so good. I ran the furnace as the sole heat source for a week, actually 10 days, because I wanted to see how long a 100 pound tank would last uh, if we were only using propane to heat the house. Now, that's never gonna be the case. We have a wood stove in the house. It does a great job heating the house. It's just that if I want to sleep at night or to go to the city, um, I come home to a frozen house. So that was an absolutely amazing experience to not worry about starting a fire for a week other than uh, cooking inside a few times. Otherwise I was using the barbecue and that has taken a whole bunch of pressure off with a baby coming because now I can stay in bed at night. Not that I'll be sleeping, <laughs> I'll be up often, but I can stay in bed and if I need to come to the city both for the classes that I teach or to visit baby's dad or to you know, I mean, things come up when you've got tiny ones so um, that's gonna be absolutely fantastic we're really excited about that I don't know if you can tell super excited other than that um, there's been a lot of projects to work on Living on a homestead, there's always projects, but we had run out of firewood, um, or dry firewood. And so it became a really big priority to figure out how to fix that. Now I have people around in the county that I can purchase dry firewood from. However, for birch and spruce, which are nice hot burning firewoods, it was gonna be about $400 a cord. And the painful part is that I have a lot of firewood out in the forest that we pushed over with a cat to create some pastures. So we spent some time, tuned up the chainsaws and went out and bucked up firewood. Some of the smaller pieces that I've been distracting myself with so that I'm not as worried about when baby is going to come is some final small pieces. Um, I went and purchased some paint so I can paint some of the interior sheeting and make it a little bit brighter in the house as, sorry, we've got somebody texting <laughs> as, um, I've been staring at insulation and vapor barrier for a while and having some nice white painted walls will be just 
really nice. So that's another piece. Um, we got a couch. Went and picked up a couch for the house. I haven't had a couch in a year and a half. I know these things sound ridiculous, but it's been really roughing it on the homestead for the past year and a half. So small things like that have been great and that's gonna give me a secondary spot downstairs where I can sit and nurse baby. Um, upstairs is, it's not so much a semi loft like a lot of tiny homes are. It's a full upstairs that we have. Um, although one end of the house is quite a low wall. So um, we've got a rather substantially slanted roof upstairs. But um, that's going to give me a secondary space. And that's actually where I'm sleeping right now because it's the most comfortable place for me. One thing that I did um, about four days ago is made a list of all the different areas that I want balance in life. And then came into the city and did something related to each of those areas. So um, when you have a baby and all of your clothes are maternity clothes, and all your clothes from beforehand do not fit and they're not going to fit right away. Having a few pairs of pants that actually fit you, it makes such a big difference in your self-esteem right after having a baby. So you're not wearing pants that are constantly falling off or trying to squeeze into pants that you're just not gonna fit for a while. So that was one piece is figuring out a few outfits for afterwards. I'm really not a fashion or looks obsessed person. Most of the time I'm wearing plaid and ripped jeans on the farm, but um, it's not farming season per se and um, having something a little bit nicer to wear to town would be really fantastic. So, um, so that was one piece. Another piece was picking up some equipment and pieces that we need for working on the house. I went shopping and bought the paint for the house and did a whole bunch of deliveries to get some work done also and did a whole bunch of marketing. So I teach homesteading classes and, and traditional skills classes like brain tanning, moxin making, beading, stuff like that, cheese making. So got a whole bunch of marketing done so that I've got some income coming in. And the final piece that was really important to me prior to baby coming, we just went and um, accomplished, which was, I really wanna be able to cook meals in my house and it would be really convenient to not have to get the fireplace roaring or this fire, the wood stove roaring in order to cook because it can take a while to heat up the wood stove and in the morning when you really want coffee or you just want to fry some eggs really quickly for breakfast it's a pain in the butt to have to go stand outside in front of the barbecue especially when it's cold and especially once there's a baby who might be screaming inside while I'm trying to go outside to the barbecue so I have been looking at propane ranges and there's amazing off-grid models that I would love to have, but they are out of my price range right now, uh, which was very low. And so I've been looking at used RV stove um, and oven combinations, and I happened to find one really close by for a decent price. So we just went and picked it up, and it is a four burner RV range. So it has the four burners on the stove and then an oven it's perfectly off grid there's no electricity needed it does have a standing pilot in the oven but you can turn it off also you don't need to leave the pilot on and these are fantastic for tiny homes now there will be um, some venting that we will put in so that we can be using this in the tiny house to make it safe and we do have the carbon monoxide tester which is or alarm which is really really important when using propane appliances but we just went and picked that up and I paid $160 for it, which is so much cheaper than the $1,000 for the um, amazing off-grid range model that I was going to be looking at. So now we're headed to the pipe fitting store to get the fittings that we're going to need to run the oven and range on a 25 pound 
propane bottle and hopefully get an auto changeover regulator so this switches you back and forth between propane bottles so that I can go to Costco, fill everything up, and after one's empty it'll automatically take it over to the other tank so that I can remove one tank and fill one up at a time, which will be fantastic also. So that's what we've been busying ourselves with to distract from the impending birth uh, that has been starting and stopping for weeks now. And it's not like this is my fifth baby. It's not that I don't know what labor's like. I've been in labor four times now and it's stopped. And learning about why that happens and, and how to work with that this time is important. Um, baby's not been in the best position for labor. And so after going into labor for a little while, my body decides, mm, this is too much work. We're just gonna shut this down for a while. And it does. So hopefully we can help baby get into a better position and welcome him to the homestead soon. And as I mentioned in one of the last videos, if you have raised a baby off grid, I want to hear from you. There are not very many people I can turn to for advice or ideas or even just <laughs> commiseration on what this will be like to raise a wee one in the woods. Um, so please comment. If you have that experience, please, please comment. I'd love to hear your tips. And we're excited to share the journey of raising a child off grid with you. That's it for today. We're getting to the pipe fitting store here right away. And we're going to go in and see if we can get a regulator and the one fitting that we need. We'll talk to you guys soon.